Thor is never shy. Thor is mighty. Thor is a god. Ming. Disney on the phone. Rockstar's on this one. Go chew on a microchip. Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. We're continuing our look at the Siege Transformers this month. And this time around, we've got who is, in my mind at least, in this area, one of the hardest ones to find in the current wave. We're going to take a look at Ironhide. Of course, here on the left is the G1 version of Ironhide, and right over here is what we can easily say is the more superior-looking toy, the Siege version of Ironhide, and quite a considerable difference between the two. But, of course, we all have to remember that the Generation 1 Ironhide his toy was originally intended to be a powered mecha suit. So it fitted little tiny men inside it. So that's part of the reason why it's radically different than the sentient robots that the Transformer cartoon and other media made them out to be. Well, of course, granted, you can buy a third-party head for the Generation 1 version so that it looks a little more cartoon accurate. I don't happen to have one of those. So, at the moment, we're kind of stuck with how he is. But, of course, our Generation 1 friend is getting a little bit of help as he is standing on a battle platform that's made from the rear portion of the van mode. Because if we were to remove him, any of you are going to laugh at this. Go ahead and laugh. Okay, that's enough laughter for that. But at any rate, that's basically what we had growing up back in the 1980s if we wanted Ironhide, as he was one of them that never did get a reissue in the Generation 1 line. But for an Autobot car, he did have a fairly decent amount of articulation. I mean, you could move his arms at the shoulder, a pretty good range. The arms did rotate at the shoulder all the way around, and they also had another hinge, so they could move somewhat at the elbow. So you did have a fairly good range of motion with his arms. I mean, of course, you had movement here at the hip, which is more used for transforming him, but it was something. And, of course, we had the ankle joint, which really didn't give us much. Of course, put him back on the platform. And of course, the cannon on the platform can raise up and down. Like so. But of course, the Generation 1's weaponry was referred to as the static laser down here. That could fire all sorts of different armaments. And, of course, we had a missile launcher as well. Taking a look now at the new Siege version of Ironhide, and he is a definite improvement. As this time around, we can turn his head from side to side. Move the arms up at the shoulder all the way. Plus, of course, there's an extra joint there at the shoulder. Bend the arm outward like so. You can bend the arm at the elbow, roughly 90 degrees. And there is a swivel at the bicep. So you get quite a range of motion. Or in G.I. Or in G. I. Joe terms, he has swivel arm battle grip. His legs do spread out at the hips. He can do a full splits. 
He can bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees, and he can bend his knee about 90 degrees. And you can twist his ankle to the side. So Ironhide, the new version at least, well, the arms do come off too, as you just now saw. You can separate the arms like that if you want to do a nice battle scenery where he gets amputated or something. That was not intentional, folks, but we may as well roll with the punches here. And, of course, the new Ironhide comes with one weapon, which we will detach here so we can get a good look at it. This is the Siege Ironhide's weapon. It's an LR Doomblast Forge Launcher. So it's some sort of launcher. I'd say it's a missile launcher, judging by how it's set up here at the front. But, as you saw in the opening, we bend the end like so. As the instructions do show, his weapon now is a hammer. So he can go from having a hammer to a rocket launcher. Not quite as impressive as some of the buildable weapons that many of the other Transformers have had, but it at least looks a lot better than Prowl's weapon trying to claim that he can swing that as an axe in addition to using it as a gun. That, that just doesn't work. It may work in a child's imagination, but to adult collectors, that really won't work. It just looks too stupid. That and the fact that using the barrel of the gun as your handle is not going to hold up very well in combat. Especially when your opponents are also made of metal. Now, let's flip these guys into their alternate modes and take a look at them. Now, here they are in their alternate modes, and wow, what a considerable difference. But, then again, we also have to take into consideration that the Generation 1 version here was built to look like a real Earth vehicle. Specifically, it was made to resemble a Nissan One Box Cherry Vanette. Whereas the Siege version is meant to be a Cybertronian vehicle. But it does seem to pay similar homage to its Generation 1 counterpart. Namely, in the fact of the side detail. As you can see here, we've got a nice yellow gold stripe along the side which is made to be an homage to the sticker here on the original toy. So that's a nice touch and Ironhide kind of resembles a van in his new form. Of course this isn't the kind of van you're going to be packing the kids up to go play soccer in, but I think, it could st I think this is the kind of van many soccer moms might like to have. So this new Siege version definitely looks like it could handle itself in various traffic conditions. Just plow through anybody that's not driving the speed limit. At any rate, how well do they roll? Well, the original one from 1984 is on rubber tires. And it rolls fairly decent, given its mo given the way it transforms and such. It rolls fairly decent. How does the new one roll on its plastic wheels? About what you'd expect. The wheel, the body does hang a little low, so the wheels don't have a whole lot of clearance, but it doesn't do too bad. And, of course, before we forget, as you can see, it's got four little holes on the top here. Any one of them you can mount the missile launcher onto. And then you've got yourself a nice attack mode. But, playing around with it, I did discover something for those who might like their weapons a little more centralized. We've got this gap here where the arms are. 
And you can use this hook end. Just bring that in there. Now it's not always going to lock into place properly, but it does sit in there pretty good. And then that'll give your we that'll put your weapon in a more centralized location if that's something that you're picky about. I mean, my eyes really doesn't matter, but to some people it does, and that gives you at least that as an option. Plus, of course, you got room here for a couple of battle masters that can be mounted on, and you're more or less covered for battle here. All in all, I do like what they've done with this new iron hide. It's certainly a lot better than the Generation 1 version that we got, but we also have to take into consideration how we got it, so it's nice to see that the toy making technology and engineering has improved in the nearly 40 years since these toys were put out. So again, I do like what they've done with this iron hide, and I have been, I have to say, I have been rather impressed with the siege line so far. So, no real complaints here from me. At any rate, that's all of our time today. This concludes my review, my comparison review of Ironhide Generation 1 and Siege versions. If you like this review, please feel free to leave me a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button down below and join up in our ranks. Make sure to also ring that notification bell so you'll be alerted when I post videos. As this month we're going a little crazy with them. Also, please consider sharing your thoughts about Ironhide in the comments down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.